What's going on guys, this is Joe Young, coming at you another video for the week. So this week I'm going to give you guys an update on my purple themed planet reef tank. So let's start off with the anemone right off the bat. So I had made a video a few weeks ago on how to treat for bacterial infection on your anemones. So just a brief history on the anemone. When I first got the anemone, uh, it was very bubbly, very lively, very nice, very, very pretty. Uh, a few days afterwards, it started to shrink up, shrivel up, and literally look like it was dying where um, you can kind of see the inside of the anemone. So what I'm thinking what happened to the anemone was probably some sort of chemical warfare with different anemone strains. The anemone could have gotten some sort of bacterial infection from the previous anemone. You know, that anemone that I had previous in the tank was a rose bubble tip anemone. I had gotten warnings from uh, the seller ahead of time to remove any anemones in the tank just because of the Colorado sunburst is susceptible to um, you know this type of infection I went ahead and actually sold off all of my rose bu bubble tip anemone you know a day ahead of time put carbon in the tank kind of let the carbon do its work for a day and I think that you know that was not really long enough I should probably have kept it for probably a week or two weeks and then a couple water changes just to make sure that you know whatever's in the system from the previous anemone was possibly out but anyways I added this uh, Colorado sunburst into it it literally went to crap for me and you know I treated it and it, it came back pretty much after two months of nurturing it so the real question was was it a mistake mixing high-end anemones with kind of lower-end anemones or wild-caught anemones or different strains of anemones in the tank now definitely if you went through that where you could have lost a very expensive anemone and you recovered it yeah, you could have probably said yes, you know, mixing different anemones or even having different anemones in the system could have probably caused that issue. But for me, uh, I decided to roll the dice on it for the second time. So when I picked up this very nice rainbow anemone that pretty much really had similar characteristics as an inferno slash, you know, sunburst, but obviously it's not, uh, but it's for like a fraction of the price, like very, very cheap. Now initially that was not part of the plan in terms of adding the anemone into the same system. I was actually going to add it into the other tank outside, but that tank was nowhere near being ready or mature enough to actually house anemones. So really I was kind of forced to actually add this anemone into this setup just because I had already bought it. So to my surprise, they've been doing very well. They actually have been co-existing in this system for probably a good month or so. What I've done to try to help control it for the most part is separate them by keeping one in one rock and another one in a different rock and keeping them on the opposite ends of the tank. Now obviously the clownfish would just kind of house and you know go from an enemy to an enemy so there was really not much I can do in terms of just cross contaminating any you know infection that the enemy would have had. I guess I got lucky and the enemy worked out um, fairly well. So one might say, like, you've rolled the dice, you know, two times, and, you know, you've got success on the second time. You know, probably, you know, just kind of keep those two and kind of roll with it, right? I decided to add a third anemone into this tank. And this third anemone is a Mock Inferno anemone, so another high-end anemone. Not quite as high as a Colorado, but it's up there. So with this third anemone, again, I am risking the rainbow catching something and the Colorado sunburst catching something as well. But luckily I've done my research and I found that the mock infernos are actually very compatible with the Colorado uh, sunburst and since you know if it's compatible with the sunburst it must be compatible with this rainbow anemone just because they're all in the same system and I was like yeah it's probably good. So that's the update on the bubble tit anemones. They are doing very nice. And here's a quick shot of the utter chaos that I fragged uh, from the rock. They are growing and multiplying very, very nicely. I'll probably end up having to frag these probably in another month or so again, putting them in their own little frag piece. Let's quickly get an update on the fish. So the purple tang is outside in the quarantine uh, tank getting treatment for holding the head disease. I mentioned that several weeks ago. It's still going through um, some treatments. It looks like it's slowly recovering, but not quite. So I'm going to kind of keep uh, that tank in that setup uh, just a little bit longer. So it's just a little bit easier to treat. Obviously, the black storms are doing great in here with the bubble tip anemones. But let's go take a look at the top tanks and 
look at the snowflake clownfish. These guys are loving their setup. I've actually was able to trim down a lot of the macroalgae in this tank so that they have a little bit more room to swim. And plus, I've been using some of this macroalgae to feed for the tangs uh, in the other tank. Right across from the setup is the lightning maroon clownfish and the gold nugget uh, clownfish. Now, unfortunately, I lost the seagrass that was grown in this setup. Uh, they just slowly got pulled up by the maroon clownfish. I ended up moving the uh, macroalgae from the stump up here just to see if it would take off. And unfortunately, it's not taken off. It's just been kind of just dwindling a little bit. The dragon's breath uh, macroalgae is just sustaining itself and not really growing <laughs> as fast or even growing at all. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, we'll try to probably play around with some of the fertilizer or some of the lightings to see if that would help out. Also on this tank, you've noticed that some of the coralline algae is starting to grow in the actual system. That just shows that the system is maturing and everything is growing in very nicely and healthy. So that's the update on the Planet Reef Tank. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's update. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, until next time guys, peace.